Hey everyone. So on Friday, I'm turning 43. Ah. But with that comes like that fear of knowing perimenopause is right around the corner, if not already starting. Actually, I don't have a lot of symptoms of it yet, but I know that a few little things have started to shift and change. And I just know that it's coming. I work with a, I would say like 80% of my clientele are women over the age of 45 that are experiencing the side effects or the effects of perimenopause. Now perimenopause, we can go through perimenopause from anywhere from like four to six months for some women all the way to like 10 years. And I know that my mom was one of the 10 year plus women. So I always think, oh my gosh, if I take after my mom, which I think I do, I am going to be one of those women that is going to be going through menopause, perimenopause forever. Um, and not a lot of fun. You know, you... I talk to a lot of women that are experiencing these side effects and are just not happy. So in today's podcast and video cast here, I am going to share with you just my best tips to help you through this transition in your life um, while you're going through this because it's like I said, it's just not fun. You can have everything from severe mood swings. I've actually had someone say they've become, you know, close to even being suicidal. That's how awful it got because they just felt so horrible or that they wanted to be put in the loony bin because they just thought, I am losing my mind. I've had, I've had men, I've had the other side of things where the men have told me like, oh my gosh, where's my wife? What happened to her? You know, like she's a completely different person as she's, you know, because she's hit perimenopause. They don't say perimenopause, they say menopause, but, um, you know, uh, vagina dryness. Oh, hooray. Lack of libido. So pretty much, you know, sex life goes into the toilet. Um, of course, weight gain and lots of weight gain in the middle. I've seen even, you know, quite tiny women who never had a weight problem their whole entire life until they started to go through menopause. And it tends to happen in the stomach, which is always really tough, right? Um, so weight gain in the middle, lack of sex drive, um, breast changes, skin changes. So, you know, we do get a lot. That's where I've actually really noticed it, um, is my skin has started to definitely change. I kind of was a little bit uh, full of myself, let's say, in the sense of I always kind of thought, oh, my skin is so great. Like, I'm not going to age that quickly, you know, or I just think I had it in my head, like it wasn't going to happen to me for a long time where my skin was going to change. And then the last two years, I'm like, oh my goodness, my skin is definitely changing. Like I'm getting wrinkles. I've even got gray hair, which I, I was just shocked when it first happened. I just, I think we kind of think that it's not going to happen for so long. And then suddenly it's like, oh, whoa, no, this is happening. Um, and, uh, I, and I think too, we get a little bit naive into thinking we're going to sail through it. I don't think that, but I see a lot of other women think like, oh, it's not going to be a big deal. And then it hits them and they're like, oh my goodness, this is a big deal. Um, so yeah, things like hot flashes are another one, insomnia, um, radical mood swings, depression, anxiety, things like that um, can hit a lot harder, which is all of these things, super, super tough, not, not fun. And and I know that when I go through it and I'm in the thick of it, I probably am not going to want to hear anybody tell me this, what I'm going to tell you guys, um, which is, it is meant to happen. And there is a way that could be, you know, we, we tend to think of it kind of like our periods, that kind of attitude about it, which is almost shameful, almost like, oh my gosh, I don't want this to happen to me. I don't want to age. We have so much pressure in our society about aging as women that we're not supposed to age. Men age, they look great, like apparently, you know, but they don't get the same pressure that we do. Um, men are ruggedly handsome when they've got more wrinkles and gray hair. And, you know, my husband's like full on gray. He's younger than me. He's full on gray, has way more wrinkles. And I think he looks great and but 
it's so funny because I don't see him going and getting Botox or tummy tuck or dyeing his hair and what most, you know, what so many women do nowadays in order to stop the aging process or getting fillers and things like that. Um, not against any of these things, but just saying it's just, you know, men don't have the same pressure that women have. Um, so it's really hard to think positively about the aging process. And, you know, I really think it's important to understand that this is supposed to happen and we can look at it, even though some of like, this isn't having a dry vagina is not fun, but and, you know, it's hard to think positive about it, but it, it does come, it does come with a shift in our, in our spirituality. It comes with a shift in how we perceive life. Um, it comes with understanding our body, like getting into and understanding our body more and understanding that yes, we're aging um, and we need to take care of it. So I see a lot of women that really do try to start taking care of their bodies more um, and their diet more because things are rapidly changing. And so the focus becomes more on us. I feel for the first time in some women's lives, the focus becomes on them right? Um, we spend our whole lives taking care of kids, taking care of partners, um, you know, getting the career and looking after all of these external things. And women tend to put all their energy on all of that and not so much on themselves and taking care of themselves. And so I feel like this is a real shift in how we're perceiving ourselves and how we start to look after ourselves. Um, and it's, they call it one of the, like the pagan, I want to say pagan, I don't know if that's what it is, but when women are going through this transition, it's, we, we, we become the wise women. That's what they call in, I think it's paganism. <laughs> they call us the wise women when you're shifting into that part of your life where you no longer have your period, you're no longer fertile. Um, we become wiser. And I really think that we do. I think it is that I see that happening to women. Um, and so it can really be embraced and you can start to, you can either fight it or you can say, okay, what does my body need at this time and start to focus on that. Okay. So um, that's, I want to say that first and kind of and really encourage that is instead of fighting it, look at it from a different perspective and say, what does my body need? How can I take care of myself better? Um, because that's a big part of even the symptoms that we're getting. Uh, and we're, I'm going to get into this. I'll get into it right now. But uh, our hormones start to drop immensely when we start to age, right? As we get into our 40s um, and early 50s, the hormones really start shifting. And the amount of progesterone and estrogen that our ovaries are making starts to drop. And interesting enough, our adrenals, which are uh, the sit on top of your kidneys that produce all the cortisol, all the stress hormones, um, though they start to take over producing the little amounts of progesterone and estrogen that we still keep producing even as we go through perimenopause and, menopause and get into menopause. So if the adrenal system is taxed, which means if you're highly stressed out and running around and trying to do everything at once uh, and you're not taking care of yourself, that cortisol production and, and your adrenals trying to produce the cortisol, that will always, your body will always go there first because that's your survival hormone, which means you're not left to make enough of the progesterone and estrogen. And so they, they, they say that that's one of the reasons why North American women have such horrible perimenopause symptoms is because we're so highly stressed out that when we're going through this phase, when our adrenal system is supposed to be start producing the estrogen and progesterone, that it has a hard time in those in that dysfunction becomes that much more exaggerated because our adrenals are too busy making the cortisol. So uh, it's really is. It's like it's forcing you to slow down or trying to force you to slow down and to start taking better care of yourself and become less stressed so that your body and the hormonal balance that it should be having at this time can happen. And you'll see, that's why, I mean, who knows, maybe they just didn't talk about it, but, you know, in the generations before us, 
there wasn't a lot of talk about these horrible perimenopausal symptoms, right? Um, if you look in different cultures, they have like, I remember listening, watching a documentary about um, Asian women and how they literally have no perimenopausal symptoms. There's no weight gain, there's no hot flashes, nothing. And so it's like, okay, what are these people doing that we're not doing? And that's one of them, you know? Um, so not to say that, I mean, I'm sure there is tons of places over there where women are highly stressed out as well as we are here. But um, it, I just thought that that was quite interesting. So number one, as far as helping to ease your transition, um, I should say number two, because number one is trying to look at it from a different perspective and trying to honor what your body's going through. Number two is of course the hormones and the stress. Okay. So the stress, we need to take care of the stress. We need to lower our stress down. We need to start taking care of ourselves and supporting that stress system. Okay. Um, and then of course, as far as the hormones go too, that should be your number one intervention is going and having your hormones checked, especially if you're in the beginning phases and still of trying to guess what what are because we're all going to lose different amounts of hormones and instead of guessing it's really a good idea to go and see exactly which hormones might be having the problem right like it may be maybe your estrogens um dropping maybe your progesterone is dropping now what tends to happen is progesterone will drop by about 75 percent which is quite a bit um and estrogen will drop about 25 so that imbalance between the estrogen and the progesterone can cause a lot of issues. It can cause heavy bleeding for some women um, and uh, really irregular periods and quite frequent periods. So you start getting your period more and they become heavier. Um, this is because it's what they call the estrogen storm that happens. And that's because the progesterone drops and the estrogen doesn't drop as much. And now we have this estrogen dominance happening in the body. And so getting your hormones jacked and seeing, okay, where are they at? What do I need to address? I've seen some women that have super low both estrogen and progesterone. Uh, and at that point, you want to maybe address it with some bioidentical therapy. Um, DHEA, which is a stress hormone, um, and what they call the anti-aging hormone too, uh, that tends to go get low as we age. I've seen women with low testosterone, which will really affect their sex drive. That starts to get low. Um, so it's so important, I feel, to get that estrogen, that whole panel done and just see where you're at and start doing it. You know, By the time you hit 40, I've seen I mean, most women, we start to feel the hormonal change. Uh, in our late 30s, this is quite typical now. Um, so, you know, you can start then and then, especially if you're feeling hormonal. Um, and then after that, just every, you know, year to two years, getting that hormone test done um, until, you've, you ha until you're in menopause. And they classify menopause as you haven't had a period in a year. And then you're considered through the perimenopause. And like I said, that can be anywhere from four to six months to 10 years. Um, but it's one year without a period. You're technically now menopausal. So having your hormones checked throughout that time, throughout the either six months to 10 year time is a good idea. So you can address what it is your body needs at this time. So hormone testing 100% um, while you're going through this to help ease that transition. Um, number three is of course diet. We have to address the diet in the sense of what may have worked for you before may stop working for you when you start to go through these hormonal shifts. And it's really about finding, okay, what's going to work for me right now? One of the best things I've seen is definitely the ketogenic diet for women going through perimenopause and for a number of reasons, but it does really uh, stabilize blood sugar, which can help with cortisol levels, which then helps take the strain off the adrenal system. Um, all the really high amounts of good fats is great for your skin and for anti-wrinkle. Um, it's really great to help you make and produce hormones. I mean, we make hormones from good cholesterol. Where do we get good cholesterol from? Good fat. So having all that like healthy, good fats in the diet can really help with the hormonal transition. I have had countless women who have started the ketogenic diet with me who said that all of their uh, hot flashes went away. 
which is amazing, right? Like amazing. So it can really help with these things um, by changing what you're doing. Like you may have been a healthy eater and you may have always exercised and then suddenly going through these shifts, your body starts to gain weight. Uh, you're, like I said, what was working might not. And so it's really good to be open-minded to switching your diet. You may need to be lower carb. You may need to have higher carb, but just being uh, open-minded to shifting it because your body's now changing is not the way it used to be. And so it's about kind of finding where it is now, what your body can handle. Um, but yeah, keto is probably one of the best places to start um, while you're going through this period of time. Um, I do have a Intro to Keto for Women's Hormone Health program online that you can join anytime. Um, we do do live ones as well. Uh, but that will kind of that gets you through all the different hormones, um, as well as introducing you to the ketogenic diet and what it's good for and how to do it properly. It comes with the meal plan, um, but that's a really great place for women to start. I have I would say probably eighty percent of of the people that purchase the program are in uh, the perimenopause phase, so you can go check that out at karenmartel.com. So. Diet, I'm going to say keto, um, is probably my favorite for women that are going through this time in their life, okay? And then um, number four, I would say supplements. So supplements and medication are going to be your best friend during this time. <laughs> and there's lots of controversy about the medication side of things. Uh, what I have found in my practice is the bioidentical hormone therapy, so bioidentical progesterone. Um, so bioidentical is different than um, synthetic estrogens, progesterones, different hormone um, therapies that a doctor may prescribe for you. They are you know, man-made, they're synthetic, and they cause a ton of horrible side effects. Um, so I really try to stay clear of those as much as possible. Uh, bioidentical, is, it, they, it's produced from something natural. It can come from an animal, it can come um, from a plant, but it's something that's more naturally derived um, and it mimics our own production of that hormone. So uh, studies have shown that bioidentical progesterone, for instance, is really good at actually combating and preventing breast cancer, um, unlike things like the synthetic, the hormone replacement therapy that's synthetic, which can actually um, cause or you know, promote breast cancer. So um, it, it, I really i am a strong believer in the bioidentical route and not the other route. <laughs> so when it comes to this time in our life, our hormones are dropping and that's totally natural. It's supposed to happen. So some people feel that, well, why are we then putting bioidentical hormones on us when we're not, when we're naturally supposed to be lowering these levels? And that's really about making this as less, with as little as suffering as possible. And bioidentical hormones can help with that. Um, like I said, it's not normal for us to have all these symptoms. So we're kind of treating it in a not normal way, but it's also not normal for us to have all these symptoms. If we had no symptoms and we sailed through perimenopause, then I would say don't touch the bioidenticals. You don't need to. But for some, it's they can really be suffering with all of these side effects. Um, and having that bioidentical can really help ease some of those symptoms. Um, and it's a bit of a band-aid for sure, but it can just help that transitional time. And, I, and I've seen it work wonders for weight loss, for dry, the dry vagina, for hot flashes, for sleeping, um, can really, really help with that. So that's something you can talk with a functional medicine practitioner about or myself. Um, and because you definitely you want help with, you know, what you should be taking. And I always say, get the hormone test done first before you start jumping over to which you know, you know, don't just go start buying DHEA and progesterone and estrogen online and thinking that's a good idea because it's not. Because if you don't need it, you don't want excess of it um, because that causes problems as well as having the deficiency in it. So those are the, that's the side of the medical side that those are your options. Now on the other side of things, when it comes to supplements, they're great, especially in the beginning to help ease some of the discomfort. 
But really, I mean, our hormones are dropping. There's not going to be many things that we can take that are going to help our own body to produce more of those hormones. Now, when we're younger, for sure, if you're having estrogen dominance, if you have low progesterone, which is common in younger women, uh, for sure, there's some amazing stuff that you can take that will help your body's own production of those hormones so that you don't need to take uh, bioidentical hormones. So that's awesome. But when we're heading into these years, it's just, our bodies are just, it's just not making them. So there's some things that can help support it, can help a little bit to produce a little bit, um, but only so far, right? Um, Cause aging doesn't end. <laughs> so supplements that I, I like, so let's first, and they kind of go with different symptoms that can help ease different symptoms. So one of my favorites is Designs for Health, which is um, called FemGuard Balance. Um, and it's got black cohosh in it, which you can just take by itself as well. But it's really great to help with the hot flashes. It's one of the most well-known ones to help with healthy estrogen levels. Uh, and, and women swear by it when it comes to the hot flashes. So I, I use it often with clients. Um, another one, and so it's got a number of different things in it. That one's got Vitex in it, which helps your body's own production of progesterone. Dong Quay is another one. And so you can buy these things. You can buy trying to find something that's got it all together in one. Um, Dong Quay is really good to bring. It's like an adaptogenic. And it's really good feminine herb, they call it. Um, there's a couple different feminine herbs, but that's one of them. Um, and that, like I said, just helps support the system, the reproductive system. Uh, let's see, I've got my little list here. Maca. Maca is awesome to help with testosterone and with healthy levels of estrogen. It's once again, it's an adaptogenic, which will help your body to, you know, if some, if your, your body needs more testosterone, it'll go down the testosterone pathway and help create more testosterone. Or if you need more estrogen, it can help with more estrogen. Those seem to be the two pathways that in research has shown to improve, but there's some people that say it really helps with cortisol levels, helps with progesterone levels. Um, so it is great for all of the, it can be great. And I've heard from many people, many women that it really helps to improve their sex drive, which, you know, we, I think there's so many of us that are like, a little boost in the sex drive could always be good, right? Um, so it's awesome, awesome, awesome for that, okay? And it's been used in Peru for like thousands of years. It's like, they, they call it like the youth herb or root or whatever. Um, it's a root, but yeah, so it's awesome. So maca, um, sleep medication, cause sleep definitely tends. Now bioidentical progesterone cream taken, um, rubbed into the skin before bed has been shown to really help with sleep. And that's because it actually help reacts on what's called the GABA receptors of your brain, which is what helps induce sleep. So putting on a little progesterone cream can definitely help sleep. Um, magnesium. Women tend to be very deficient in magnesium because it's missing in our soils. Uh, so taking, you know, four to 600 milligrams of magnesium right at bedtime can help with sleep. Um, taking out things like caffeine and alcohol can really, really help with sleep. I know those are like two, two of the most favorite things for people, but um, they really help with hot flashes. And one of the reasons why women can't sleep properly is because they're having hot flashes during the nighttime. So removing caffeine, removing alcohol can help immensely with those things. Um, taking things like GABA, L-theanine, their amino acids, and they help calm brain chatter and just help induce sleep. Um, valerian's another good good one. Um, valerian is almost like it works so well that it can make you groggy in the morning. It's a, it's a herb um, that helps to just calm the system down and help you just sleep. Uh, now, and you can find these in different, you can find these things all together in a product a lot of the time. Designs for Health has one called Insomnitol, which is great. Um, Neurocom, which is awesome too for sleep. Both of those are probably one of my favorites. Um, I always go with Designs for Health because I sell Designs for Health, so it's the product I know the best. But you can find it online. You can get it on Amazon. Um, and you can even go on and see what the ingredients are and kind of find something even similar to that at your local health food store, whatever you want. But um, those are my faves for sleeping kind of interventions. Um, but definitely like the progesterone cream, I think work wonders 
Uh, and then a couple other things. Um, ashwagandha is great for adrenal support and for thyroid support. I should mention too, because I didn't during the hormones, to get your thyroid tested when you hit perimenopause. It is so, so common for a woman's thyroid to slow down when we go through perimenopause, which makes weight loss impossible. If your thyroid's under functioning, it's going to be very hard for you to lose weight. And you could have zero signs of hypothyroidism up until you hit a certain age and then kabam, you're suddenly hypothyroid. So it's so important that if you're struggling, especially with weight and fatigue, go have your thyroid panel done and get them all checked, the TSH, the T3, the T4, and the reverse T3 done. Super, super key. Um, I would say one out of every two clients right now that I work with has hypothyroidism. So it's not something to overlook um, because if it's happening, like I said, you're not going to lose weight and you're not going to feel very good. It can cause anxiety, insulin resistance, um, insomnia. All the, a lot of these symptoms that we're talking about um, can be from the thyroid start starting to go down and it just coincides with all the other hormones that are starting to kind of crash so check your thyroid super super important okay in my intro to keto program i actually help you to um figure out if you have a thyroid problem without having to go to your doctor we do an at-home test temperature test and, and a little quiz to help you determine whether or not the thyroid could be a problem that you should be paying to go and have tested if your doctor won't test it for you uh, because it's just it's like the number one intervention that needs to happen um, if you're struggling with losing weight truly okay Vitamin D, um, super important too for women um, going through menopause. Uh, the ashwagandha is great because it helps with the adrenal system as well, helps with your thyroid function as well. Um, I've seen it help women to sleep. It really helps with anxiety. Um, it's an adaptogenic herb. So uh, it, you, uh, the, my favorite brand is the Purica ashwagandha. Uh, I've used it for years. I absolutely love it. And you can, you can actually feel the difference when you take that one too, which I, I really appreciate. If you can actually feel something working, um, it helped. It really helps with stress levels. Um, calcium D-glucurate is great because it will help to break down as bad estrogens. And because we have that estrogen storm happening, we really do want to try and clear out as much of excess that we have out of the system. So calcium D-glucurate will help to break down estrogens in your gut, which is really important. Same with D-indole methane. It will bind to bad estrogens and pull them out of the body. Uh, that can really help with women. They're really too of the really strongest um, estrogen detoxers that are on the market. Um, definitely some of my faves. So those are a few, you know, of my favorite supplements for this transition. And like I said, you can find ones that have it. FemGuard Balance by Designs for Health. Um, Lorna Vanderhog has one called, now what is it? I know she's got an Astro Smart one and then a Meno Smart, maybe is it called? Meno Smart? Yeah, Meno Smart. Um, hers got, has a number of different things in it. Uh, it's got black hole caution in it as well, but you can find these ones that have a combination of stuff in it. Okay, um, and then as for exercise, right? So what is best for women um, during this time? <laughs> To, that's going to help with weight loss and just help with all of these symptoms. And so a couple of my absolute phase, one would be yoga, right? To help with everything, the adrenal system, the hormonal system. It acts on every part of our body. Um, it helps you to relax, lets go of the stress. Um, it's moving meditation, helps you connect with your body, quiet the mind, all those amazing things. And when you get into yoga, it's really, truly transforming. So yoga... Um, high interval, uh, high intensity interval training. So we don't want to be doing these long runs and crazy amounts of cardio. Uh, cause I know that that's what everyone thinks she needs to do if she starts gaining weight, but that will, can really backfire because it's really hard on the adrenal system. And remember all the stuff I just talked about with the adrenal system, we're taxing it enough. We don't need to tax it farther because that will then cause more symptoms of perimenopause. So 
a high intensity interval training. So little spurts of sprinting or little spurts of high intensity exercise is awesome. And it has actually shown to help burn fat for up to 24 to 48 hours after you're done. Um, unlike a straight stretch of cardio, which as soon as you're done, you're stop, you've stopped burning. And the weights, putting muscle on, super important. It also is going to help you prevent osteoporosis. It's one of the best ways to prevent osteoporosis is to lift weights. So, you know, join a weight class or get a trainer so you can do it properly. But putting on muscle is going to help raise your metabolism. It's going to help uh, prevent osteoporosis. It helps shape the body. So all of these good things. So a mix of those three is my absolute, like, perfect trio of exercise um, to help you through this time, okay? Um, and then last but not least is lowering inflammation as we age. So you can lower inflammation, inflammation by doing all of these things I've just talked about. Um, you know, getting your hormones in check will help with uh, inflammation. Lowering stress will help with in inflammation. Changing your diet, most of all, will help with inflammation. Now, why do we not want inflammation? Because inflammation is inflammation also of the skin. So I've always prided myself on my good skin. And I think it's because I eat so well and I don't eat inflammatory foods, which then inflames the skin. Um, and not only that, if you're inflamed all the time, no, you cannot lose weight. You're going to feel horrible. Your gut's going to be in terrible shape. Your cortisol is going to be affected. Your blood glucose is going to be inf affected. So all of that uh, inflammation of the brain causes Alzheimer's. Um, inflammation of the skin causes wrinkles. <laughs> you know, like it's, we need to reduce the inflammation. Um, my favorite supplement for that would be curcumin. Um, and then, like I said, diet change. So either a paleo or ketogenic diet or autoimmune paleo, um, absolutely. Autoimmune paleo, especially for anyone that has high amounts of inflammation. Uh, and in turn, that's going to help. It's like a waterfall effect all through the body hormonally. So um, lowering inflammation, super important. Okay, so that's it for today. I hope that helps. Um, have questions about menopause, about symptoms that you're having? Do you need help with it? Uh, then comment below wherever you're watching this or listening um, or go on to any one of my pages and forums and websites where you can comment and I'll be sure to answer you. Okay. And you can also just check out the intro to keto for women's hormone health. It's such an incredible program. We have such great feedback from it from women because they, it's, it's a program that's going to teach you about your hormones and what you can do about them because I, it is our number one crutch when it comes to our health and our weight. So uh, you can check that out at karenmartel.com. All right. So that's it for today. Have a great day wherever you are in the world.